this is AJ Stalexi and welcome to another tutorial. So we're learning how to make our jumpsuit and you can see the jumpsuit displayed here on the screen. We're learning how to make this jumpsuit but this pattern you can use it to make any other jumpsuit. Just know the basics, how to join the upper part of the jumpsuit and the down part of the jumpsuit which is the half length, the half bodies and then the trouser. But to, know, to make it we need to construct the basic bodies and the trousers. So join me as we go through the process well if you're new to the channel welcome and can you use the subscribe button subscribe so you can get notified whenever we drop any new tutorial we'll try to drop tutorials weekly so subscribe so you could get notified well let's get started so i do with the line here this line is the starting point is from here we'll be taking all our vertical measurements so this is the measurement we'll be needing for the upper body score we're starting with the body's construction so we'll be needing the shoulder measurement the bust measurement, the half length measurement, the half or depth measurement, the sleeve length, and the round sleeve for the sleeve of the body. It's a long sleeve but um, jumpsuit. So let's get started. So on this line, I'll say this line is seven as our starting point. On this line, we'll take our shoulder measurement and we'll divide our shoulder measurement by two. Um, the shoulder measurement here is 16 divided by two is eight inches. So we'll just mark eight. And then we'll take our neck roundness. We're using because it's a it's a jumpsuit. With uh with a collar, so we're using a high neck, and for high neck, we go by three inches by three inches for high neck. So just use our French curl to curve it out. So this is it. So this is our neckline. Then the next thing is to do to do is we'll come down by one inch. On this shoulder measurement, come down by one inch. Connect this one inch to the neck. But we want to add all our sewing allowances on this pattern. So I'm cutting on fabric. We cut exactly on fabric. So if our shoulder is 18 inches divided by uh, it should like 16 divided by two is eight and um, it's eight inches. But we need half inch to join the sleeve. So just add half inch here. So it's from this half inch will come down. So it's the same thing, just on this mark, come down by one inch. So it's still the same thing. So we just added half inch to this measurement, come down by one inch. So on this mark here, you take your arm o depth. The arm o depth is 7.5. So just take 7.5, mark it, then roll it, roll it down. Then on this I'm on my line to take the bust measurement plus half inch. The reason why we're adding half inch is because the bust is not starting directly under the arm over. We're just taking it there, but it's not really it's not really starting under the arm. Over. So we're taking our bust measurement here. The bust measurement is 37 divided by by 4 is 9.25. So we're marking out 9.25 here. Plus, then we say plus half inch, so add half inch. Okay, 9.75. So, this is it. So, this is our bust measurement. So, we just roll this, then we come down to our waist measurement. So, from here, we take the half length. The half length, the normal half length for this person is 16 inches. Of course, I'm making a jumpsuit, we're coming down by one inch, making it. 17 inches so on this 17 inches now we'll take the waist measurement the waist measurement of this person is 32 divided by 4 is 8 inches so we'll just mark 8 inches but we'll be adding that of um, 2 inches that on 1 inches that on both sides so we'll be adding the that allowance here so we want to add that to this Measurement. So this is eight inches plus that allowance of okay. Let's do two inches that so making it ten. So this is the that ten inches. Then we need sewing allowance of one inch on both sides. So add one inch sewing allowance and then we'll add one inch sewing allowance here as well. We're not adding that to the bust. So this is the basic blouse. This is the sewing allowance now. So this is just basically how to construct it then we add half inch that we use in joining half inch at the end to join the trouser so this part will join the trouser of the jumpsuit this half inch so really back again 
then now we'll take our arm o curve so for your arm o curve if you don't have a french curve you just go like this take the midpoint of the line this is seven and a half take the midpoint of seven and a half this is the midpoint you mark it out then you come in by half inch and you connect from this top to the half inch and then you connect from here so, so this is how to take it but if you have your french curve you just place your french curve and then you still get your perfect arm curve like this and then you curve this one back like so so this is it so the french curve actually gives a better curve but if you don't have a french curve then you could do a French hand. So these are to make your basic body. Then you could add half inch on the side. This half inch now will join the sleeve. Join the sleeve. So you could just add half inch or two. Or add, we're adding all the allowances on this dress. So this is it. So this half inch will join the sleeve. So this is basically how to make the upper part. So the next part we'll be making now, we'll be cutting this part out. And then construct it. And don't forget our dart for the dart placement. We just from the shoulder take it to the nipple point. The person's nipple point is 10 inches, so you mark 10 inches. We are not starting on 10 inches, we are starting on one inch below the nipple point. Then you mark the person's nipple to nipple distance, whatever nipple the nipple distance is. Let's say four and a half. You mark four and a half here. And then on the waistline, you mark same four and a half. And then you roll it straight to that one inch below the nipple point this is the nipple point one inch below it then you mark you said it took two inches that which is one here one here that's two inches so this to this is two inches one here one here so you just join it like so and this is basically how to take care of that so you do this for both sides of the front but this is basically how to construct the front part so we'll be constructing the back of our body and the trouser of the body we're using this to cut the back as well. The back has zip, so we just add the zip allowance. But for this jumpsuit, there's a joining at the front because we're using two fabric at the front. So this center front, we're going to be cutting through it. Then we're cutting on fabric, we add half inch to join on this part and this part together. So when I'm doing it, shall you see everything what it looks like? So now it's time to construct the trouser of our jumpsuit. We'll be starting with our hip measurement in place of our web measurement, but we'll root this line, which is serving as the starting point of our uh, trouser construction. So for the measurement to be needed for the trouser is the waist measurement, the hip measurement, the tie measurement, the hip drop, the crotch, the knee length, the round knee, the ankle, and then the trouser length. So let's get started. So first of all, we're starting, we're supposed to take our waist measurement, but I said we'll not take our waist measurement, we take the hip measurement on the waistline. So this line will be serving as our waistline. And our waist measurement is 32, but we'll not take 32 here, we'll take our hip measurement. So our hip is 40.5 divided by 4 is 10.125. So we'll just say 10.2. So this is our hip measurement on the waistline. Then we'll come down, take our hip drop. Our hip drop is 8 inches, but this is a jumpsuit, so we'll be doing a different construction here. This is not a trouser, it's a jumpsuit. And for a jumpsuit, because we don't want it to be too tight on the person wearing it, let's just draw a quick jumpsuit here now. So let's say this is the up for this, sorry. This is the hop for this. This is where the body joins the trouser now. And then this is the trouser of our jumpsuit. And then comes down. Then comes down. You notice that for the jumpsuits, this part because if this part is joining, these two parts they are joining each other. The crotch needs to be longer. This is the crotch. So this joining now, because of that now, because of this joining now, this crotch needs to be long. This is the crotch. But for your normal basic trouser, this is the band of the trouser. This is the waist getting to the hip and then still the same trouser. The reason why the crotch, you use your exact crotch and your exact hip drop is because this trouser now, you determine where the waist is. You place the waist of the trouser wherever you want. But for your jumpsuit, you don't determine where the waist is because it's the bodies and the waist, the bodies and the waist that are joining together. So it's from the joining now, that's where your waist now, you know where it's being placed. So if you don't add an extra inch, the crotch here will be tight on the person 
at this damn party to be very tight and the person will be very uncomfortable. You see some people wearing jobs and they'll be seeing some gada hair. It's because the crotch is smaller. So because of that, we're taking a longer crotch. So let me just turn the paper to the back. This is the final part. So back to our construction now. We we'll take our hip measurement. So we we'll take our hip measurement on the waistline. This first line is serving as the waistline. So the the hip drop of this person is eight inches. But because of our explanation, we'll be adding one and a half inch to the hip drop. So this is where we we'll take the hip measurement. So on this line, we we'll take the hip measurement. You can add one inch. You can add one and a half. You can add two inches depending on what you want. So I'm adding one and a half inch. Then on this line, I will take our hip measurement. Sorry, hip you said is 10 and a half, so this is the hip measurement. Then we'll take our crotch. The crotch of this person is 10 inches. We'll cover adding one and a half to now be 11 and a half. So this is we'll take our crotch. So on this crotch line, we'll be taking our thigh measurements. So the reason for the crotch is to get your thigh measurement. So the tie, whatever your tie is, you divide the value by 2. The tie is 26. Divided by 2 is 13. But for your hip and your waist, you are dividing by 4. Just your tie, you are dividing by 2. Your round knee, you are dividing by 2 as well. So just read it. Just draw it. This. Read it to this line. So now use our French curve to connect the tie. This is where we took the tie measurement to the hip. With our French curve. The tie to the hip, just connect them together with your French pole. So this is it. So this is your trouser pole. Then the next thing is to take our knee measurements and the round knee, then the ankle. For this jumpsuit, the the ankle is a little bit free, it's not tight. So we will be making a straight trouser. This is not a palazzo trouser, neither is it a pencil trouser. So we're making a straight trouser. So first of all, we'll take we divide this line by two. This line is 10 and uh, 10.2. We we'll divide it by two. That is a uh, 5.1 So we'll mark this 5.1 at the end of our paper. Then we'll join it to the straight line. Okay? This is where the long ruler comes in play. So this is it. Now we we'll successfully divided the hip measurement into two. So it's from here now we we'll take every other measurement. So the knee length of this person is waist to knee is the knee length we said is um 21 knee length is 21 so mark 21 on this 21 we'll take the round knee the round knee is 17 divided by 2 is 8.5 so we'll take half of 8.5 here and half of 8.5 here so let's take 8.5 well because we want it to be a free trouser so let's do it in nine nine is four and a half so we'll take four and a half here we'll take four and a half here then the ankle of this person we said is is 14 the ankle is 14 but because we want a straight trouser we'll not be taking the ankle measurement we'll be taking the knee measurement down so this four and a half we we'll just transfer it down so we'll just take four and a half on both sides because we said it's a straight trouser this is not a pencil trouser or a fitted trouser if it's fitted then we we'll take the real ankle measurement because it's not fitted we want the trouser to just go straight down to the M. But first of all, where, where do we take at the M? We need to know the M of the trouser. The person's trouser length is 39. So let's check 39. It's not even up. Okay, this is exactly 39. So this is it. This is the person's trouser length, 39. So I think we're almost we are even doing the right thing. We're almost right with the placement. So this is, we just connect this line and then connect this line then you connect this one now to the side then you connect this part to the tie as well when you watch what i'll do now the trouser is not really straight the body the leg is not really straight like this so we need to curve it in or a little you could use if you have pattern master you could use your pattern master curve it just to the knee 
point they just curve it inward a little to get a fine shape so this is the basic trouser that i'll be using to join the upper part of our jumpsuit but we're not done if we're in, in a situation where you're adding um that to the waist of your trouser then on this line take your that measurement if you are taking one inch on both sides you take it to the hip drop we said the hip drop now is um, is eight but this is our hip drop so just come up by one inch or two inches okay this is on the front pattern so let's come up by two inches for the front pattern the back pattern will come up by one inch for the front, front pattern will come up by two inches and just join it together so whatever inch you are taking as your dart make sure you add it to this length this is the reason why we took our hip measurement here not the waist measurement because of when we take our dart and the rest we cannot take our exact measurement so i'm using two inches that for the that measurement so for these two inches that for the um that placement i'll be adding it to the real waist measurement so the real waist measurement of this person is 32 divided by four is eight inches so this is the person's real waist measurement in a situation where we're not adding that you just take the waist like this connect it to the hip and this would have been the real trouser shape but because we're adding that now two inches that's so we're adding the two inches back which is this so this is just exactly two inches which is this two inches here so this is now the new trouser the waist measurement of the trouser so this is the new line this is no longer working because of this that so we just rule out that line and this is how we place it on the trouser so, so this is basically so we'll cut another one like this for the back pattern but for the back pattern we'll be extending the back by two inches and then we'll be adding two inches to the size of the trouser in case you don't know how to do go about that well i have a tutorial on how to make trouser how to make palazzo and in the construction i showed how we added the two inches upward or two and a half and then i'll add it two and a half on this side and then two inches on the size of the back trouser only while for the front trouser we use it like this so if you want to learn how to add the other inches for the back trouser please check the link in the description box uh, on the tutorial on how to construct your basic trouser but this we'll be using this now to cut the back pattern and i'll be adding those allowances please don't cut the back pattern exactly like this add the extra two and a half inch as i said check the link in the description box to see how to do that there's a tutorial on that on how to make your palazzo trouser so we're going to be cutting this out now and then we'll cut it on fabric when i'm cutting on fabric you'll see what it looks like the trouser now we'll cut it on pattern this is the back pattern um the while cutting we said the paper is not enough so i added the many parts of the trouser length and then the allowance for m on the main fabric this is the back pattern you can see the extension we did on this side then okay this is the back bodies the back bodies you can see that we cut it out we already added one inch sewing allowance at the side on the pattern look at the one inch allowance so we just cut it like that then this one inch here is zipper allowance for the zip so this part will go in a zip later for the um the back dress for the the back will be having the zip then you can see that the neckline is high because i use the front pattern to cut the back but i cannot cut the neck the same way so the neck line is high so i came down by just one inch for the neck then this is the front pattern you know the front has two fabrics joining so we have to cut the center front of the front together and divide it so by the time i left half inch on okay let me just see look at it now on with the pattern i can see the half inch so the same thing i did on this one i left half inch so this half inch will join this half inch for as the um, sewing allowance to join these two together to form the front of the dress because this is the way the jumpsuit will look like so the front has the joining then this is the sleeve i've already cut it you now to make a basic sleeve just that this is a long sleeve just increase the length the way i want the length of the sleeve to be so this is the sleeve of the jumpsuit and then this is the front trouser so this is 
the pattern also for the front so when i was cutting i added one inch ease allowance for the front pattern only you know the back already added two inches to the pattern so just cut it like that on fabric you can still cut like that on fabric you can cut exactly like this on fabric if you want but we just wanted something that would be free a little because this is a corporate way so i added one inch ease allowance when cutting on fabric and then i'm ending allowance so the next thing to do now is the trial on a wrong side front and right correct side these are the correct side this is the wrong side already we marked it as a chalk just mark it to chalk to know the wrong side is the wrong side facing each other you take here to the sewing machine and sew it by half inch then you do the same thing for the back trouser and when you're done and when i'm done i'll show you what next to do but just take it to the sewing machine like this and then sew it with half inch join the two sides to the the two parts of the front with half inch but if you left as much as one inch you could sew one inch since i added one inch and ease allowance i can do one inch if i want but this is it so i'll sew here then i'll do the same thing for the back pattern for the back pattern i'll do the same thing the correct side facing each other this is the correct side facing each other i'll just sew it from here down to the tie the flap I'll just sew it down by half inch or one inch but you know i'll be adding zip and the zip is starting from the up bodies to the trouser so i'll measure from the waist of the trouser to maybe five or six inches or the best thing is and uh, take a uh, two or three inches above your hip so just place your trouser like this mark your hip line wherever your hip line is from up by two or three inches or even one inch depending on how you want your zip to be but it should not get to your hip so from your hip line come up by one two or three wherever you place you then uh, you take that mark let's see that i will not just quickly show you so let's assume this is our hip line this is our hip line we come up by one one inch or two inches that inch wherever we come up by it. so it's from here we sew down so this other part now will be sewing we We'll be joining it with the up part to place our zip because the zip will be at the back of the trouser so that's just exactly what you do but don't forget that you'll be sewing your dart so we'll be constructing the dart at the front and at the back of the trouser then for the body we will be adding the dart also at the front and the back of the body so don't forget to add the dart so I'll add the dart on the bodies and the trouser then join the crotch then you see what it looks like before I show you the um the trouser we've joined and then the that I want to show you how to construct a baby collar. We'll be adding a baby collar to this. So to construct a baby collar, just use your fabric or your pattern, trace out the neckline of your basic bodies, and then the shoulder. If the baby collar stops at the midpoint of the shoulder, the shoulder now is six and a half. So let's just say six. So let's take three one quarter so this is the shoulder this is where the shoulder is then take the center and trace it out so wherever you want your baby color to stop then you can take it out so this now will curve like this just curve it this is your baby color this is how to make your baby color so when you're cutting you cut it on folds for the front and then the back of the collar so you cut two one like this so one will be on this side of the dress this is your dress one color will be this is your dress now so one color will come like this then the other color will come like this so this is your baby color then to get to if for a color that you just want to stop only at only at the front these are you just cut it like this exactly like this when you station by you want the color to go through to the back which is what we are doing for the joint so the collar is at the front and at the back we we'll cut this on fold so this place now will be on fold when we are cutting i'll show you what i mean by on fold so this collar now but the collar we are using now it has a shape at the front this pointy shape so and the shape is not starting at the center front came like this so we we'll just slide it to any angle of our choice like this down then take it back to this curve so this is the new collar so this is just the way to be on the neck of the dress so we'll cut two of these one for the right hand one for the left hand but this place will be on full so by the time it's open 
this other part will go to the back of the leg. So let's just cut this pattern out. So now this also mean by lean on fold is on fold now. So this part, the shoulder is on the folded part. So we'll just pin it like this. And then we we'll trace this pattern out. This is the neck. This is the but the back neck is higher than the front neck, so we'll cut it high first, then we'll now we're shaping the neck. So let me just cut it out. So now I've cut it, I not follow the front neck, I follow the back neck pattern. Then I'll pick only one side like this. This is it. I'll pick only one side and then cut it following the back neck. Because the collar is going from front to back. So if I use one neckline, it will be too wide for the back. So this is the back neck, this is the front neck. So for the back now, the back is not coming down like this at the back of the the jump the collar of the uh, jumpsuit we are copying now the back is not coming down as much as this the back is just a little bit just a little pointy so we we'll are shaping the back the back just the back is something like this now it just came down a little like this so something like this now will be shaping out for the back so just come like this and then back to this so this one will cut out for the back this is the back collar that is what I mean is the collar has a different design at the back. The effect is not as long as the front. So we'll be shaping the back. But when you're cutting, make sure you cut with the longest part. Don't cut with if you are cutting with the back now. I would have added the longer part now of the front into the collar. So you cut with the longest part, which is the front, then you will be shaping the back for a style like this that the collar is going from back to front. When the situation by the collar is just only at the front, the baby collar is only at the front, then you just cut it only like this. You don't cut on two, just cut it as one piece like this. Cut two, use it to turn each other. So this is it. So this is the collar. This will be at the front, long like this. And then this will be at the back, short. So I'll cut two of this. I'll cut three more of this. One will join this to turn this. Another one will turn, the other two will turn each other. So we will need four of this, which is this and three more. So that was it. This is the collar now. In one part of the collar, we said we cut four pieces. In one part of the collar, you add your collar stay, or if you don't have a collar stay, you add your and uh, use um, your canvas or ST to cover the first surface that is at the back, the wrong side. Then you now put your gum stay on top of your canvas or st so that's what i did i didn't use color stay but if you want to use color stay you can use color stay color stay is harder than this but one that's hard effect so this is it so the color stay now will attach it to the wrong side of the fabric so this now you just turn it like this then you place the, this is the right side of the fabric you place the right side of the second one now that you didn't add anything place it like this let it match and then you sew it round leaving only the neck opening i've already pinned this one down so i'm going to sew it around i'm going to sew it around like this leaving only the neck opening we will be adding the neck so when after sewing around you turn it out then we fix it to the neck so this is just want to just show you about what how to what to do to the collar before adding it to the bodies we've joined the shoulder of the back and front and then we've joined the middle so what is left is the back opening where we'll be adding uh, zipper so this i've joined one collar i want to show you how i did it so this is the front collar which is the long longest side that is pointy and this is the back just place it like this on the neck on the right side now of the fabric there are two ways you can choose to place it on the wrong side and then turn it or place it on the right side we may have to place it on the right side like this and then i'll just pin it round just the way this side is pinned now I'll pin it and then stop on my sewing allowance. This allowance here to not get to the end because this end is where my zip will be. So I'll just pin it around like this. Then when I'm done pinning, okay, I'll sew. If I sew it like this, the neck cannot stay like this. It will be rough. So I made a facing. How do you make your facing? Just place your neck folded like this. Place it on a fabric, just like this. Place it on a fabric this center place it like this at this center and then you cut 
the neck out so by the time you cut it out you're cutting your facing then you can use choose any length of your choice for the facing this length is your choice whatever you want so this facing now our facing that i joined two pieces of fabric i when i was cutting i forgot to cut it on fold so i ended up having two pieces i just joined it at the middle so this middle where i joined this will, will be at the center of the blouse so whether there's a joining at the center or not for this i place it at the center then you pin it round like this to the end pin it around like this then you sew it by the time you sew it this person now will turn the collar in so the collar will be looking neat here and neat here so that is just basically what i want to do then for the trouser i've sewn all the parts of the trouser and it's ironed now we need a good press so what is left now is the zipper allowance where i'll be adding zip and then the waist so this part of the trouser by the time i join the sides of the blouse to be what will be left nice to join the blouse to the trouser so what i'll do nice to sew the face into the neck which is the collar and then join the sleeve is our basic sleeve i just join the sleeve to the arm and close it by the size of the dress then I'll join it to the trouser and then I'll tell you what to do about the sleeve because we're adding bands to the sleeve. For the band on of the sleeve, you could still use any inch band you want. Then the length should be your sleeve roundness, should be the length. Then add a uh, collar stay or gum. So if you're using gum stay, add canvas first to, to it before you add the gum stay or you use just collar stay directly. You put it on one side of the band. Then the other side, I just used only st on it so these two now will be joining each other as the band of the sleeve so this is one band this is one band and then the one i'll turn it this is the second band and there's the second also i'll turn it which is this but when i'm doing all of that you see it so the only thing i'll do first is to just join the sleeve by the cap by the armhole join it to the bodies of the dress and then close it down then i'll show you how to do the band so the upper bodies now we join the sleeves to it, the long sleeve. So we want to put the band. So this is how to attach the band. Attaching the band like or making a shirt. So after closing the sides of the sleeve, like so, then you turn it to the back. This is the back of the hand. This is the front. The back, the front. So just turn it, bring the back forward like this. Not the front, not the back forward. With the side seam at the side like this then measure the wideness this is four inches the midpoint is two inches so you mark the midpoint of this wideness then you take it up by four inches i'll be taking it up by four and a half so this is a straight line we'll cut this through so we'll do the same thing here this is the front the back of it which is the back that will be at the back of the hand here place it like this you take check the wideness of the hand take the mid point mark four inches but i said i'll do four and a half then you take it straight down so this line will cut through this line you just cut through this line like this talk you cut it to the end cut it to the end but i'll measure it very well before i cut so that i'll be sure what i'm doing but just this is just basically what to do let me check okay so let me just cut it now so you see it i'll do the same thing for this one now so i've cut it out so by the time i fix the band the band now come from here down to this end so this is where to open so this is now the fix the band of a shirt so it will come from here to the back so the opening now will be somewhere here when you see when you wear your shirt when you button here and this is the front this is where the button will be which is the back of the hand when you place your hand like this this is the back so exactly what we are doing here by the time the person wears it when he wants to button is by this side so we'll cut a long piece of fabric this same fabric since we are using this as band we'll cut the same fabric just long piece just make it so it as a bias just to turn this cut edge so that it will be neat to cover you so we just sew it around here we do it on the two sides 
and then we'll add the band but when i'm done sewing the long piece i'll show you how to add the band now i've then done what i started to do at the opening we did at the sleeve so just cut a straight fabric sew it around like bias at the sleeve opening so we'll be fixing the band so this is the band already so i i close it at two ends so just open it like this the outside should be facing out so just place it like this on one end then this other end to this end then you pin it down when you sew so that is the reason why we fold it up in so by the time you sew, sew it the machine will climb here and at the same time climb this side together so you just sew it like this and when you're done sewing here you press here inside as well then you close it so this just basically how to sew the band of the sleeve and you cannot put button hole and button for the sleeve so that's all about the sleeve but the john suit are not done yet so this is the trouser this is the opening at the back of the trouser and then this is the bodies and this zipper allowance also is at the back of the bodies so we just place right side facing each other place the center front and this the center front of the bodies and the center front of the trouser together use your pin to secure it then go to the side seam side of the bodies and side of the trouser from the side seam pin it go to the other side seam the body seam and the trouser seam pin together because these parts must align then you cannot pin in the other parts then for your darts ensure your darts are aligned so you can see the dart of the body and the dart of the trousers they are touching each other so you could still pin like this pin all the darts points together with the dart of the body and the dart of the trouser so by the time we are done pinning we just take it to our sewing machine and then sew round by half inch but we added half inch as sewing allowance to join the bodies and the trouser so this is basically how to do it i just want you to see what it looks like after pinning because the next time you'll be seeing this is when i am done sewing Okay, so this is the last part. So this is it. So you can see now that I've pinned every part. Now this is the jumpsuit. The up and the down joint together. So you can see the jumpsuit is ready. By the time you join it with half inch, we are done with the jumpsuit. So this is how it is. Then at the back, I'll just add my zip to this opening. And I'll be using an invisible zip. I'll just add a zip to the opening. And that is just basically everything about the jumpsuit. Then I'll fold the end of the trousers. So I said I'll join it. So this part I pinned now. The off and the, the bodies and the trousers with half inch. Then I'll sew the zip with one inch. Then I'll really show you how good I'm going to place the band. Sew it around it. Then close the top of the band. So make sure it's folded inside. If you turn it out, you see that I ironed it folded so that by the time sewing these two together on the bodies and these two together on the sleeve and these two together outside the folding is already make it will make it easy for me i'll no need to be folding tucking the material in when i'm sewing i'll just do it like this place it like this and then run a straight stitch down so i'll do the same thing while this one is inside just run a straight stitch down and then fold the end of the trouser and then my jumpsuit is ready so the next time you see this jumpsuit is when it is completely ready this is the jumpsuit we are done making our jumpsuit so you can see this is the joining at the front this is the collar this is the band at the sleeve and then the opening so this is basically how to make the jumpsuit you can see the legs so this is just how to make your jumpsuit i'm sure you enjoyed this tutorial please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you've not clicked on the subscribe button please subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified whenever we drop any new tutorial so once again, I am AJ Stalexo and thank you for staying with me.